Hello, F Sharp. Welcome back as we continue our journey of exploring the many wonderful features of the F Sharp language. Now, today we are going to talk about something very interesting, and it's list comprehensions. Now, I've actually used these and didn't really point it out. And so today I want to spend a little bit more time diving into this rather interesting feature of the F sharp language. And I'm, I'm only now like starting to use it a little bit more and thinking about the implications of it. And it's funny how much I used it and just never thought about it. And I think that's actually one of the great things about the F sharp language is that you could actually be using a really powerful feature and not realize what you're doing and, and using it successfully. And so what I'm hoping to do is to kind of like pull back the curtains just a little bit for you and say like, oh, oh, huh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that was there. And so list comprehensions. Now, something that you will probably see quite often is something like, hey, I want to create some, I want to create a list of elements. And so, hey, one to 10, right? Or one to five. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's do this. One to five elements. And I go ahead and do that and I get X. I'm going to go ahead and move this down to the bottom. This could be the better place for us to see this. Do, do, do. Come on. I'm just going to run it again. Let's see? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Great. And so what we're saying is here, like, hey, generate the sequence of values from one to five, and I want to put those elements into a list. That's what we're doing here. Great. Wonderful. What happens if I only want the even numbers, though? Well, I mean... Fortunately, we could use a stride. So something like that. So let X equal to two. Uh, whoop. No, I can start. I can start with two and then go by twos up till eight. I could do something like that. Uh, oh, I mean, it's the same thing. I'm call that A and call this B. I could do that and say like, hey, I want to generate the numbers from two to eight. I want to use a stride of two. And if you watched the last video on loops, you will have seen something like this. Let's say uh, I want to use some other kind of logic. I don't know. What I could do is I'm going to go ahead and comment that out, comment that out, and say end. It's so like, you know what? I want these values. And I say, hey, 1, 4i in 1 to 10. I want particular values. If I is, if I mod two is equal to zero. Then give me I. And yeah. So what is this doing? So like, okay, so I'm using that kind of looping construct that I introduced in the last video. And now what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, I want you to do this test. If I mod two is equal to zero, then I want you to return the value. And if I run this, I get two, four, six, eight, ten. Huh. I did not have to put an else statement here. I did not have to uh, provide an else branch for this because this is a list comprehension, which is kind of a special case of a thing called a computation expression, which is not going to be covered <laughs> in the intro material. We're not going to talk about creating computation expressions, but it's one of those things that you end up using and not realizing. I will cover it later, but it is a deep, deep subject, but you're kind of seeing the implications of it right here where, Hey, whenever I see this value, whenever, whenever this is true, it's going to yield a value. It's going to return something from the expression. And what's interesting is the, and what confused me is that like, Hey, I see this. If then I would think that I would have to have an else statement here, but you don't, you don't need to. And what that means is now I can do something really silly. What is this? What is going on? Okay. If, Okay, if I mod two is equal to zero, then I, but then I again, 
what? Like I thought, I thought F sharp was an expression language and like everything had to return something. Not only do you not have an else branch, but like you're saying the same thing twice. What is going on? What happens if I run this? Two, two, four, four, six, eight, eight, six, eight, ten, ten. What madness is happening? What is going on? Trust me, when I saw this, I was just kind of like, my eyes kind of like bugged out of my head. Like, I, I cannot believe what I am seeing. Uh, let's, let's mix up some more. Let's blow our minds a little bit more. If I mod three equals zero, then I. Okay. So I have this if then. It has no else branch. Got another if then. What is this going to give me? A is now two, three, four, six, six, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> so we get two. Let's let's walk through this. Let's see how this was actually computed. Because like again, like this kind of like oh hurt my head a little bit. And I've been programming F sharp for <laughs> years, and I, was, and I was still like no, no, please stop. <laughs> so first value is one. We're going through one through 10. If one mod two is equal to zero, then I, it's not. Okay. If one mod three is equal to zero, no, it's not. Okay. Now we're going to go to two. If two mod two is equal to zero, then I, yep. And so we get a two. And here's the interesting thing. Like this expression keeps evaluating. Like when we, when we went into here, this list comprehension kept running. Like it keeps executing code. It's not like it broke and then went back for another I. It's still evaluating these expressions using I. So now three mod three equals zero. Yep, that is three. And so um, even though, oh, sorry, but we were on two. So two mod three is equal to zero. Nope. Okay, then we're gonna come back up for here for three. Three mod two equals equal zero. Nope. Three mod three equals zero. Yep. Three prints out three. Then we get to four. Now we're on four. Four mod two is equal to zero. Yep, it is. So it prints out the four. Four mod three equals zero. No, it does not. Five. Five mod two equals zero. Nope. Five mod three equals zero. Nope. Doesn't do anything. Six. Six where things get interesting. Six mod two is equal to zero. Yep. So it returns I. We get six here. It keeps evaluating though. Six mod three is equal to zero. Yes, it is. And so we get another six. So what happened here is that just because we yielded a value here doesn't mean the rest of the, the expression stops just because the rest of the computation stops. It keeps going. It keeps evaluating. And so we got another six here. So that's so this was just like what is going on and so think of this the way to think of it the way i suggest thinking about this is when you write this logic say i want to generate some values and then i'm going to do some things this will yield it will keep running and even if for a value in what you're iterating through one through 10 doesn't yield a value, that's fine. Because really what this is doing is it's like, I'm giving you an expression and I'm wanting you to evaluate it. And it is periodically going to yield values. It's going to return values for you. And I want you to put the results of all those yields into a list. That is essentially what you're asking for F sharp to do here for you. Kind of mind bending a little bit. And this is really powerful. This allows you to do a lot of really cool stuff with something really simple. Oh, and, and by the way, we're not limited to just one. So let B equal to four uh, I and one, two, five. I'm going to keep it low. Do. And so, you know what? Four J in one, two, six do and i could do something with that so if i is equal to j then i so now we have this nested for loop it's going to go i one through five 
and then nested in that for each I, it's going to go through all the J's and wherever it equals, it's going to return. So what is B here? It's one, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's kind of dumb, <laughs> but, um, let's, uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put a print statement in here. So print function. Yeah, that was amazingly silly. Just to kind of prove out that we're doing here. Um, uh, and I'm also going to put a, no, 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 I'm gonna put this down here. Uh, so value of I, I is equal to, and I'm going to interpolate another thing. J is equal to, I put J in here. So we're, it's going to, for each I and J, it's going to print out just so that we could prove out like, Hey, this is actually doing something, but it's only returning when I is equal to J, which I know is kind of silly, but what we can see now is that what this looping structure looks like. It's like, Hey, for I one J five, oh, I didn't quite capture everything. Okay. This is the very beginning of it. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four. So it is going through all the values, but at the end of the day, these were the only values that this expression actually yielded. And so the, the important thing to know is just because this expression is evaluating 10 integers does not mean that this list is going to have 10 values. It is only going to have as many values as the inner expressions yielded. You could have more, right? You could have more. And that's where I showed this really silly thing. I'll show it again. Let's see equal to, uh, again, four I and one, two, three, and keep it low. I say, Hey, yield an I then yield I times I. Then yield I times I times I just to be ridiculous. And so now what, how many values do you think we're going to get? We're going one through three, but for each one we're yielding three times. And so I would expect to get nine, one, 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 two, four, eight, three, nine, 27, because for each value of I, we yield the first time we yield the second time we yield the third time. <laughs> okay. There's another thing I want to show you. <laughs> so this has been yielding single values. Each time we yield a single value. What if we wanted to just plain go nuts? So let, oh, not, 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 not. let D equal to again, for I in one to three, we're gonna keep it low, do, but let's say we want to, I'm trying to think of like a good idea here. No, I'm just, I'm just gonna do something silly. What if we wanted each of these to like generate a list of their own? So, so for each I, we want a list of it and we want, um, We want it to be the, the values from I to three. So three. <laughs> so right now D is returning a list of lists. So it's like, okay, for each I, it is going to then create a list for that I of values from I to three. So, okay, what would we get for that? Okay. Well, we get a list. That list is made up of lists. And that first list is one, two, three. The second list is two, three. And the last list is three. But let's say we wanted this all as just a single list. What if we wanted the values of one, two, three, two, three, three? What if we wanted that? Yield bang. What? <laughs> um, so this kind of goes to the heart of the fact that underneath the hood, we're actually talking about something called computation expressions. We are not covering right now, but that is why I was using the term yield here. It yielded an I like it yielded a value. It yields a value. It yields a value. It, it is yielding a value from the expression. 
Yield Bang is saying, I am going to yield a nested thing, right? I'm like, I'm not just going to yield, I'm not going to just return a value. I'm going to return a list of values, but I want you to mash that all so that the result is still a single list at the end of the day. And so that's what the yield bang does is it kind of flattens that list out into it flattens the list of lists into just a single list with all the same values. <laughs> yeah. When I saw this, I was just like, Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> so this is the power of list comprehensions, but wait, there's more. It works with arrays too. <laughs> ah, so, okay. Here, now we're doing E, but now I'm using braces and then bars because that's how I say like, Hey, I got an array expression here on one to three. And that is how I can create an array, an integer array of one, two, three. Great. And I'm going to do all the same things I did before. So E F is equal to, uh, oh, no, new line, new line four I and one, three do I, I can do the same trick. Okay. And again, this is what I do is I'm looping through the values of one through three and I'm yielding each time. Okay, great. But what if I wanted to go I times I now I'm going to yield twice for each value of I what boom, still getting an array one, one, two, four, three, nine. And again, I can do F G what comes after. Okay. So, so four, I in one, three do, and I want to yield okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. So it doesn't mess me up yield bang. And this is going to be I three. Yep. Still works. Flattens that array right back out. Oh my word. This is, this is fantastic. These, these kind of transforms can be really useful and like, oh, I'm wanting to generate this really particular sequence and I just want these values. So being able to combine the kind of if statements like, Hey, I only want to yield in this condition, being able to do like nested oh, nesting works for arrays as well. And being able to yield out a list and then have it all flatten back out into a list or all flatten back out to array. That is so useful at times when you're wanting to generate specific sequences of values. And I'm sure the implications of this go even deeper, but this is one of the things that I, well, first of all, when I was learning F sharp, this was more difficult to do. You had to use more syntax. A lot of stuff has become implicit. You used to have to do something like, uh, uh, you didn't have to do it here, but you'd have to do it, I think, in the if statements. Like, there's more syntax you had to use. It just made it a little bit more cumbersome. It F sharp is just is this gorgeous language now. And so, oh my gosh, all this stuff gets so much easier. So, yeah. And this also works for sequences as well, but we haven't talked about sequences yet, but we will. And they, ah, yeah, fantastic stuff. So, list comprehensions array comprehensions, very powerful tools for being able to generate uh, sets of values and iterate uh, over them. So learn to love them. And yeah, uh, I don't know if your mind was blown like mine was when I learned about this, but this was an incredibly powerful feature that I wish I had known about much earlier in my F sharp career. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. If you have some questions about uh, applications for this, or uh, you have another scenario that you want me to explore, please let me know down in the comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, until next time. Thanks so much.